This disclaimer will explain why I have been very careful about using trademark brand names only for educational purposes and avoided using photographs that I didn't take. This is the quintessential blade guide adjustment tool. Please make something similar if you haven't already. We are going to be working with all of these pieces. There will be detailed instructions, but study the way the parts go together here for a minute or two. In the lower left of the slide is a photo of a correctly adjusted saw. You should note the relationship of the top of the castings. This is one method of installing the blade guide adjuster tool for the upper blade guide. If necessary, reinstall the upper bearing axles at this time. I'll start by applying a little WD-40 to reduce the blade hanging up on the bearings while we're making the adjustments. This is just how easy it is to make the most exacting adjustment on the saw accurately. Initially I thought perhaps I would need to bias the settings against the pushback by the blade, but it turns out that the bearings are so effective at twisting the blade that a bias is not necessary. Walter Smirziak really deserved the patent for his blade guide adjustment system. I have provided two different clips of the same adjustment and filmed with different cameras just to try and get a good perspective and demonstrate how easy it is. I have only accelerated this to 200% speed. Our adjustment goal is to set both of the bearing pivot bottoms flush on the adjuster tool and just make contact with the upper bearing. Here is another clip of the same adjustment repeated. Since one of the bearing pivots on each adjuster is fixed, the saw will return to the same horizontal plane relative to any scribe lines you may choose to put on the table to align the vise to. Here's the tool set up for the bottom blade guide adjustment. Follow the same procedure. Here are some ways to use a wrench to hold the adjuster while you torque the retaining bolt.
Refer back to adjustments part three, where I take the aluminum round slug to the lathe to test its accuracy. If you have made the hardware upgrades and minor modifications, and of course the adjustments, it will so greatly reduce the potential to throw the blade that it is most likely it will stall the blade and motor instead. I have done so many times without damaging the blade. That's not a problem if you are standing at the saw and can shut it off, but otherwise it may damage the motor. Allowing the belt to clutch is a safeguard, and here is one method to set it up. Thank you for watching Module 2 Adjustments. I hope you will move on to Module 3 Modifications.